nuance and timing. It's a little bit more difficult to explain and to understand, but I hope that I can uh, show off an example of uh, some of those things. So it's over the course of this entire game, um, once in this round, once in the third round. And this first one, so I'm playing uh, a combination of two Gwentleman spy decks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, uh, one is. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of difficult to explain. So basically, I just take. I took out three. I took out the reviving medics, and I took out. I think one of the. Uh, infiltrators, and then I put in three uh, enforcers. So basically, this gi this gives me a disruption option, which I really enjoy. Um, because I felt like if I just relied upon Impera Brigades to try and get all my points, it wouldn't do all that much for me. So instead, I went for some disruption options, which is also pretty good against things like Movement to Go Tau. Uh, if, you, if all you do is build up your own side of the board, you're super vulnerable to things like, uh, you know, disruption effects like Blizzard. So if you have some disruption in there instead, uh, you kind of mix and match it a little bit, then you're doing pretty all right. So this is one example of timing. Uh, and when I say timing and nuance, they basically mean the same thing in the context of what I'm trying to say. Uh, so right now, I want to... I want to... Be, <laughs> I'm playing up against a, uh, I believe, a revive deck. So he's going to be playing a lot of these uh, Tersek veterans, I think they're called, or something like that. And then he's going to have his... Uh, he's going to revive the warriors or whatever they're called in later rounds so basically i don't want to try and go to two and three rounds I, I i need to be able to win this round i cannot lose this round and at the same time i can't i don't want to go uh down a card if i have to so i really want to play my enforcer but if i do that i will not make it to a strength total and then he can pass and he wants to pass because he doesn't want to go up against a long round against two of these enforcers so even though this does set up a nice combo for me this does kind of set up further plays in the future i don't want to play it because he'll just pass and then i'll lose the value i get off of two enforcers so instead i'm going to play something else i'm going to go for a bit of a high tempo play so that i can't play an enforcer next time without uh being too far behind so just like that he has to go six points and then he has to go eight more points to make it unsafe for me to play an enforcer that's kind of like that's a kind of a tricky thing to get sometimes, especially when players don't always react in the way that you expect to. But you still have to go for the high EV play. The high EV play here is playing a high tempo play and then playing an enforcer the next turn uh, and not playing the enforcer first. Sure, maybe he doesn't pass and I get I get to get and I get to get away with it. But that's not very reliable in the long run. I think good players would typically pass against two enforcers. And they're above your strength total at the end of their turn or at the end of your turn that you pass over. Uh, and especially, like, especially against a deck like that I'm playing against, which excels in short, quick round across all three rounds. So if I had played Enforcer against a, let's just say, a, uh, a typically good player, then I would have gotten punished there. And now, luckily for me, I have room to play my second Enforcer. Now, if he passes, I'm totally okay with that because he would go, uh, we'd be on the same cards, which is per per perfectly fine by me. And now, the longer this round goes on, the better it is for me. I even have a pretty good uh, chance to play a spy as well, if I, if I want to. But I don't want to play a spy unless I can play the spy and still be above his strength. Because it'll make it worth more. And this is kind of minor, but I'm making sure not to kill my own spies because I want to be able to play. Uh, I want to be able to play an impaired brigade and get the value off of those. So instead, I'm kind of spreading the damage around. Uh, I could hit these one, these one, uh, one healths, and clear them off. Um, but I would lose one, one point of strength advantage per one that I hit, and I'm not too afraid of any shenanigans in which he heals them. So I'm just kind of spreading it around. Although, generally speaking, killing units is pretty good, but I'm not too worried about it in this situation. If it was something like monsters, I would. I'd probably take the take the hit, but since it's done, I don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, 
Oh, right. That's a part of a uh, nuance, being able to keep the spies alive so I can use it later for Empire Gate. And he passes on the same card, which is fantastic for me. Because he was probably afraid that he, uh, he can't pass the strength total on one card, and he doesn't want to have to go two cards down to try and pass it. Although that wouldn't have been such a bad thing considering he's playing Revive. He could have just like bled me out as much as possible in round two, and then he just hits me with like a huge Revive in round three, and I can't really deal with it. So I'm not looking to do all too much here, except for maybe play my Cantarella and cycle it out of my deck. So something to be aware of, if he had Ulderic, his spy, his 12 strength spy, he could have played that after I played my spy, but I'd still have a higher strength advantage than him, and he would have to play another card anyway. Um, playing a spy against something like... Um, is there a 10 strength spy? I'm trying to think. I don't think there's a 10 strength spy, right? You have Taller from Wither Realms, which is 11. You have the 12 strength uh, one from Monsters. You have... What is it? Is it 14 strength from Skoatel? And then mine's 11. And then... Who am I missing? Anyway, I think playing uh, Kedro is pretty safe. Because even if he did play an 11 strength spy, uh, if I was playing against another faction, he, he would still have to play another card because he would just tie. <clears throat> so going into this round is going to be a little bit tricky because I know he has a metric ton of power to, to go off on and I don't really have much I don't have my engine my disruption engine this is kind of I, this is really weird by him I'm not really sure why he's playing and this actually just wanted me the game right here uh, I'm not sure why he's playing this guy he doesn't really he doesn't really want long rounds. He wants kind of short, quick rounds where he can hit he can play and revive uh his warriors, his tertic warriors, or whatever they're called, and get, you know, and build them up over the three rounds. And if you play that, if you play this guy, you're just kinda of asking for a long round in which this deck, this revive deck, is not very good at, I think. Although maybe he's done some testing and he seems that he's found that it's actually pretty good. Who knows? <clears throat> also this brings a uh, like an, an alchemy card or something out of your deck right or a spell what spells was it even running I couldn't even remember a spy that he ran except uh, outside of restore but that's over it's a little bit weird uh, so I kind of mess up here a little bit um, or it's sort of a mess up so I've been going up against so much gold weather lately that I just uh, thought to save my clear skies until we get down to something like uh, like two cards left each. So I don't actually play it, but at the very at the end, he actually doesn't have any other weather cards. So I just kind of take two damage turn for like four or five turns for nothing. It's kind of unfortunate, and it, especially since I don't believe I have really anything to rally. It just I just kind of waste my first light, and I take two damage a turn for nothing. Although, it's so hard to say whether that's the high EV play. I think it's the high EV play according to my own experience. Uh, since, like, almost every single game I'm going, I'm running up against Gold Weather. But notably, I haven't been running into Gold Weather against Skellige. It's mostly been Skoatel. Mostly Skoatel. Pretty much only Skoatel, actually, oddly enough. Is it because their golds are bad? That wouldn't surprise me. All right, so uh, I use my spying, my infiltrator to toggle the spying on this guy. Uh, so this is really, 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 really bad. He's going to be dropping 23 strength bronzes all freaking game. That sucks. And I'm pretty sure I already used my mana, right? No, I think I still have mana in my deck. Uh, so I hit this. I use my infiltrator, hit this. So whenever I pull out my uh, Nazica Brigade... I can hit this and kill it and get the full boost and do the full 7 damage. Now I'm going to use my second infiltrator to hit this guy with the spying tag. So that now whenever I pull into Menno, I can just hit it and kill it. Assuming I have Menno, I don't remember if I used it yet. 
Okay, and I believe I pull out emissary because there's not really anything to hit with uh, the other the other two. Nothing in particular, anyway. And I still get some spying synergy off, so I can get these points up and pull these out of my deck. Pull the Nazca Brigade, kill this spying unit right here. Things are looking pretty bleak, but I still have an out. And he plays his skirmisher. What's called Clan Tersec Skirmisher, I think it was called. I thought it was called Skirmisher, but I thought the other other ones were called Skirmishers. So I'm still afraid to play first light, which I think was also a mistake, but and luckily I was able to pull into Menno and I killed this 23 strength one. Oh, so good. And then I can use my Witcher, which is also a bit of a tweak on the deck on the Gwentleman deck. And then I can hit this other guy. But I don't need to do it yet. He can still have a revive card in his hand. So I'm sad and I go first light. Clear this weather. Finally. Even though he never had gold weather. He plays and throws down another 15 strength guy. Or not another 15 strength, but a big bronze guy. And again, no reason for me to kill this yet because he could have a revive left. And if he pull, if I kill this and then he revives it, it's as if I just wasted my Witcher. It's he'll still he'll just bring it back and it'll be like what twenty five strength or something like that. It'll be even stronger than it was. And this unfortunately doesn't hit anything because he has no his last card is like a spell. It's this, and because I didn't build up my board too much, I've been using some disruption options and control options. He doesn't really have a good target, and to just barely pass the strength total, I'll use my Witcher to kill his twenty two strength. Uh, Base strength bronze unit. Pretty mental. Well, that's the kind of thing. Uh, some nuances, some time, some little, some little things. Usually I try and hit big things, but these were just little things that kind of elevate your game just another step if you're able to look out for it. So in the first round, it was making sure not to play too many of my low tempo uh, uh, combo pieces, and instead making sure I stay above in his uh, his strength total and controlling the round. And making sure it goes as long as possible as I need it to go. Uh, without being passed on too early. And then going into round three. I just made sure to save my cards. And set them up in such a way that I could take advantage of them later. For example, even though I used my infiltrator at the very beginning of the round. I was able to get the maximum potential out of him by hitting a 7 strength unit. So I can hit with Nazca Brigade. And then I hit his uh, 23 strength unit. Which allowed me to hit it with Menno. Which I saved uh, Calvate for. Or I saved uh, the other guy for. And then I saved my Witcher for the very, very, very last. Even though he didn't have a revive in his hand, he very well could have. And I would have had the wit. He would have revived something and it would have been effectively meaningless. Uh, or effectively a lot less worth. But I could just kill his 22 strength unit and still win the game. No matter what he revives. So that's it. Thanks for watching.